<laughs> now it's time to take a look at an art book. Eat my shit. Um, uh, I'll try not to be too long with this one because it's something that could be delved into very deeply with uh, the right amount of time and attention given to it. Frankly, I'm surprised I haven't brought it up before. Um, I don't know if you, that's, is that visible? Uh, barely. 100 Months by John Hicklinton. Um, this, I've shown this a few times, uh, Heavy Metal Dread. Um, I, I've shown it primarily for the Simon Bisley tales of, of dreadfulness, um, hand-painted within its pages. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Funny, 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 busily, busily, funny. There's also uh, John Hicklund. So I'll show you this uh, as a precursor to the book, just to give you an idea of sort of who he is and what he does. Um, He's done other stuff, but I believe he's primarily known for his work with 2000 AD, especially that with Judge the, the Dread. Um, this is his artwork. Kind of fucking crazy, like bordering on you. If, if somebody told you these were drawn by a person in a mental institution, you'd probably be like, yeah, I could see that because uh, it's. It, it's it's not bizarre, but like it's rough and ready. It's not too polished, but like, like that. That's you would never see that in in a standard like Marvel or DC book or whatever. So it's fucked. But it's it's like it's grimy and gritty and and violent. Very very violent. He gets very very visceral with his violence. Uh, there's actually quite a sizable chunk. Of this book is uh, Dread Stories by Mr. John Hicklinton. Uh, he's got a very unique style. It's very, very like you can't miss it. You know, you see his work, you know it's his work and not somebody else's. Uh, I mean, the 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 artwork itself speaks about it more than I could say I think um, it's yeah he's not not my favorite art I'll be honest like I wouldn't probably purchase especially a long time ago I wouldn't have purchased a book based on this artwork being in there obviously Simon Boozley was the obvious one for why I got it but I think what can happen with a lot of art and artists is <clears throat> you might not appreciate the art necessarily as it is, but then you learn more about the artist, about the person who makes it, and you start to see them in the artwork, and it gives you a better appreciation of where it's coming from, of where where it's being made, from from whence it came. Um, so the drawing style, I'm not entirely fond of. I think that the physical, you know, some of his lines and stuff and the shapes he uses. But as an overall product, I love it. I love, I've grown to love and appreciate what he's created. Um, so that's, like I say, I won't spend too much time on it uh like it's a really weird looking dread it really it doesn't look like any other judge dread because there's a few artists that draw judge dread especially nowadays where it's just the way it's gone is judge dread and every other comic book character has a, a such a set look that it has to stick by whereas back in the day every artist sort of drew their own version of dread and they let them do it, you know. So this is a really, really unique looking dread. Um, but that's so that's that. Then came this uh, hundred months. I was shown this. Uh, I was in a comic book store, and my friend I was there with handed me this and said, "Hey, you'd probably like this. Fear me, all who obey the coin. Keep that in mind. That's a very." Uh, 
that's the the i mean there's a lot there's a lot to this um the overall theme i feel is man fighting against or like earth fighting against the corruption of man um and you know the love of money and the corruption of society and such um <clears throat> so my friend picked this up uh, I flipped through it and saw the artwork and said, you and this looks like your kind of shit. And I flipped through it and I was like, oh, do you know what? You might be right there. Uh, the the imagery and the words get a little bit like, if you take them on face value, they can maybe come across as a little bit edgy teen, which is obviously exactly my wheelhouse. That's what I am. It's what I do. Um, like that's quite like a... You know, an emo goth art kind of look to it. I'm trying. I try to have this zoomed out so you can see as much as possible. Um, yeah. So lots of imagery of, of crucifixions and beatings. Comparing, I think this character is, in essence, Mother Earth. I believe that's the case. So this is Christ and Mother Earth in a similar sort of, you know, abused and crucified raped beaten and bloodied <clears throat> um and to kill the swine god who defiled and killed my friend so the swine god is uh i guess mankind you know the the old fat white men who run the banks in essence that that's that sort of person pedophiles rapists money hungry greedy fucks who destroy the earth who take the earth and destroy it the artwork is very very loose it's all marker pens lots of white space obviously um very dark in tone and then you get stuff like this armageddon and these pillars which i think she mentions being like skyscrapers you know crumbling and decaying and stuff but really like ominous, you know, pillars and people falling in the background. Uh, many take their own lives rather than face me, that that kind of shit. So yeah, a little bit emo and, and stuff. <clears throat> but clearly someone putting thought and passion, like this is, you don't draw all of this just because like, oh, it's Saturday, I've got a day off, I'll just draw some shit. This is something you put together for a reason. And that reason is this. This is the last work John Hicklinton created before he died. Um, in the 90s, I think he died late 90s, maybe early 2000s. I might be wrong, but I'm awful with timelines. But not just before he died, before he died of... Uh, assisted suicide which I saw this book my friend showed it to me in this store and I bought it just because it looked cool I thought hey you know I like the design the hair covering the face and the, the shapes I love the shapes of the bodies and stuff and it's bloody and violent and dark and, and whatever I had no idea really who John Hicklinton was what he'd been through and you know how he'd come to his end um he suffered i guess a large portion of his life uh, with ms which is a, a as far as i understand it a, a terrible terrible degenerative disease which just fucks your body up stops it from working he was in constant daily pain um been to doctors after doctors after doctors and, and tried many many things oh fucking look at that it's gnarly. Uh, now in darkness is the truth revealed in the radiance of the abyss. Chaos reigns. Um, the whole way through, it, it's it's telling the tale of this uh, character's journey, being released from like a hundred thousand years slumber, coming across the wastelands to meet the the swine god, to defeat the 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 evil that's corrupted the land in which they were born, that they were raised in, that they are, that they, they have, it's their land. That's fucking 
pretty fucking incredible. <laughs> Drawing a pile of corpses is difficult. I can attest to that. I've tried and failed to do it well a few times. That's a really nice, like almost uh, Dante-esque Divine Comedy Inferno sort of illustration. Just piles of bodies with like tails and shit. It's good stuff. Um, so yeah, he... Uh, John Hicklinton uh, suffered, suffered, and suffered. There, there's, um, there is at least one or two documentaries about it. Um, you can probably find on YouTube. Look him up. I definitely advise um, looking those up to to get an idea of who he was and what he was going through and dealing with. Um, so eventually, it came to the point of, uh, I guess, you know, him, his wife, the doctors all agreed. If if it was his choice, his best option. Not necessarily his best option, but if it's his choice, then the option is assisted suicide. So he went to is it Switzerland or Sweden or one of those places where you can do it and uh, died by his own hand, I guess. Um, and so like this, he put this together knowing he, as I understand it, knowing that was the plan. He was going to be leaving the world and this was what he'd be leaving behind um which is absolutely almost like uh, you know if a, a dad writes their child a letter if they know they're going to die you know saying i wish this for you and i wish that for you and i i'm sad i didn't get to see you grow up whatever whatever this is john hickenton writing that letter saying you know these these are the evils of men that you know have these atrocities to their name and this is mother earth doing her damnedest to to stand up and and tear the horns off of humanity's evils and stick them back into his body uh and so rereading it with the knowledge of why it was created like where it came from it takes on a whole new feel <laughs> like it's dark before it's you know dark and violent but when you know this is a human being's last breath of, of creativity they've spent their life drawing painting creating comics uh, and even in the judge dread comics you saw they're pretty gnarly you know there's some some violent imagery some dark tone in there and uh, from what i've heard in interviews and stuff he was known for being very very funny but having this like dark edge to himself as a person um so in his last moments or last whatever spread of time it took to create this uh he he put all of that into it and then created this. Um, so some of the artwork is, is some of it's amazing. I love some of it. Some of the shapes and designs of, of demons and stuff. Um, some of it is like, in, in a strictly like mechanical term of looking at the artwork it's as, as image. Some of it's like, that's cool, I guess. Um, but, and also, in terms of putting a story together, because this is, is it a graphic novel? Is it something else? Is it something new entirely? Is it its own thing? It's not panels. It's not a comic book. Uh, so I don't even know what to call it. But it's it's a pretty fucking fantastic thing. All this this new form she's taken on. All these arms. Um, yes, yeah, so she's wandering through this wasteland on her way to the Swine God, which I'll, I'll try to get to that before we run out of time. Um, who's this? This is the priest at the, the throne of the, the Pig God. Um, and like I say, it would be really easy to spend an hour or two looking through this fully, reading it on camera. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Um, so she comes to the swine god, which I think it's pretty much straight laid out, but in my mind, uh, which I guess is the point, is this is the evils of humanity, the greed and corruption of humanity personified 
as this pig beast. And the time is now. She's going to fuck him up. And I love that each page is, is its own individual... Like, if I put any of these drawings up as my own work uh, on Instagram or whatever, I'd be happy with it. But to have a whole book where every page is its own, you know, work of art. The ugliness is overwhelming. And it's like sexual, creepy ugliness there. Um, just nasty, nasty, vicious, vile, disgusting, awfulness. That's really cool. I mean, it's obviously that's cool, but like within context, without context, it's just... So she's fucking mad. That's a great image. Um, tosses her club away, grabs the bull by the horns. There's loads of action. Like, you could easily have just like one panel of this happening, but to spread it out is really, really good. And I love the format as well, because having it landscape is very, very different. Uh, kicks his teeth in, fucking whatever, whatever, starts tearing his jaw open, rips his jaw apart, gets the club to bash his fucking brains in. The drawings are so good. And I love uh, the multimedia of it as well. Um, you know, there's pen, brushes, spray paint, white out, different inks and stuff. It's really, really nice to put together. Um, she comes at him with an axe, jumps, swings, and cuts his neck, beheads the swine god, um, and then dead. Look at that, that's a fantastic image. Little piglets coming out. They've got to die too. Neither shall the young be spared. Because, you know, it seems vile and, and harsh to, to kill the, the baby pigs, but a vow made in darkness to kill the children of the swine god, every last one. Because they are that, they are the direct, literal children of this god, the, the offspring of this filth. Um, brutal. <laughs> that is brutal. So she's victorious, I guess. Um, the swine god's dead. I love the architecture as well. There's quite a lot of that throughout. Um, really, I mean, not, I want to say Cthulhu-esque, but it does have that sort of vibe, the eerie, sort of unknown, ancient civilizations and stuff. Um, and then she is the mewling of a long pig newborn, a baby in amongst this this hell world. Um, so then I think she's basically contemplating whether or not she ought to destroy the child. You will not grow to be just like them. There you go. Don't play innocent with me. You will not grow to be just like them. Oh, uh, there you go. You are... Uh, a race born mad, uh, shaven apes tearing up the image of God. Don't be innocent with me, you'll grow to be just like them. Um, so she's in turmoil over what to do about this baby she's found. And then, hush, little one, shh, I am a harsh midwife. She, Mother Earth taking in newborn humanity. And that's it, and some words from people who knew him. So that's something I'm really, really glad to have in my possession. Uh, it's a cool piece of, of artwork as a whole anyway, but then once you realise where it's come from, it's a whole other thing. Um, a very, very powerful look. 100 Months by John Hicklinton. If you can find it, if you can find him, look him up, look it up. Check it out. Uh, yeah.